So, um, <clears throat> as I said, thank you to attend this uh, talk about the status update of the graphics stack in the Raspberry Pi device. And uh, thanks also to the organizers of the FOSDEM and especially to the people organizing this DAPRO, uh, which is great. So, let me introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Juan, and with me is my colleague Chema Casanova. Uh, we work in Galia and the graphics team, and we are working on the Raspberry Pi graphics stack. So, uh, what is it talk about? Uh, is basically cover the change that happened in the graphics stack since the release of Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye Edition was in November 2021, up to the latest version, which is Bookworm, uh, which was released uh, several months ago in October 2023. So, um, I mean, this is for people that are not uh, used to with uh, terminology with MISA. Uh, we have like uh, five devices, Raspberry Pi devices. Well, there are more, but are like uh, variations of those devices. The Raspberry Pi 1, 2, and 3 use the GPU from Rathcom. It's called Video Core 4. And the name of the MISA driver is called BC4. Uh, and then for Raspberry Pi 4 and 5, they use the Video Core 6 and 7. And the name of the driver changes, it's like VCD for the OpenGLES. Uh, in this case, there are support for the Vulkan driver, which is called uh, V3DV. So, what things happened? Well, probably the most exciting one is the release of the Raspberry Pi 5. Um, this is uh, an evolution of the GPU from Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it's the same architecture, but with uh, more benefits and uh, higher limits like uh, it has like a higher clock rate, so it's faster. It supports up to eight render types. Um, it has better support for subgroups operations, which is interesting for Vulkan. And uh, it does, uh, provides a lot of changes in the, at the institution level uh, parallelism. So it allows to uh, have more uh, compact uh, shaders, which run faster. Uh, drawback is that it has a bit of less register, so it suffers a bit of more relative pressure. And uh, this, this is this drive, this support is int integrated in the VCD, VCDB device, and uh, it was the, uh, submitted for review almost the same day the Raspberry Pi 4 was announced, and now it's released in MISA 23.3, and that's in, in the current uh, 6.8, which is required. Uh, as I said, this is more or less the uh, evolution of the GPU, so of the, sorry, of the GPU from uh, the Raspberry Pi 4. So nowadays the features are more or less the same in terms of the driver implementation. So uh, it supports the OpenGL ES 3.1 and Vulkan uh, 1.2, and that supports a non conforming version of OpenGL 3.1. We will see later. This at this moment. So. From the point of view of the drivers uh, in the MISA, in the OpenGL driver, well, um, the one of the important things was that we promote from OpenGL 2.1 to OpenGL 3.1 uh, with some caveats, I'll explain later. Uh, and I think this is very, quite important because at the end, the Raspberry Pi is intended to be to used as a desktop uh, PC in most cases. So uh, targeting the OpenGL desktop apps is quite interesting. So there are some, a lot of applications that require OpenGL 3 point something, and now they can run on the, <coughs> on the Raspberry Pi. The upgrade from, bookwork, from Bullseye to Bookworm uh, allow us to expose 35 new extensions from OpenGL, or OpenGL, OpenGL, yes. And uh, as I was saying before, uh, the driver is not fully compliant of 3.1 because there are some missing features in the hardware. Like for, inst for instance, uh, this version requires eight Raspberry targets. This is fixed in Raspberry Pi 5, but not in uh, Raspberry Pi 4. It doesn't support 4. And then the, the Huawei hardware itself does seamless schema filtering, and the OpenGL spec requires no seamless. And then some other format that are not supported. But all in all, probably these are not the most easy features. Uh, so we support anything else. So in, from a practical point of view, Probably any application that uses OpenGL 3.1 uh, will work in the Raspberry Pi. Then, in the Vulkan, 
uh, driver, we move from Vulcan uh, 1.0 to 1.2. So it's, this is Vulcan 1.0, 1.1, and then 1.2, which meant exposing like 80 new extensions. Uh, if you compare uh, both versions of the driver in, from Bullseye to Vulcan, Bullworm. So there are a lot of new extensions. Uh, some, I mean, I mentioned like uh, extension dealing with subgroups, as I said, which is very in interesting for Vulcan. Uh, extension dealing with geometry shaders. But I think the, probably the most important work done was uh, improving the performance. So when Vulcan 1.0 was released, the target was just having a performance driver. So we didn't spend any time on making it fast. And during this lifetime, we were working a lot on making it uh, more performant, specific, especially in the shader compiler uh, to reduce um, the limit analysis and uh, make uh, strategies to make the shader uh, smaller and run faster. The good part is that the shader compiler for the Vulkan driver is actually shared with the OpenGL, so both the OpenGL and Vulkan share the same compiler. So all the improvements in the driver uh, in, the in the shader compilers uh, also affect the OpenGL. So basically the improvements are both for Vulkan and from OpenGL driver. Another thing relevant to mention is that now think which is uh, the driver that supports OpenGL over Vulkan, work with the, with the V3D uh, driver. So it means that you can use the thing to run uh, OpenGL applications. And then also we, well, we not, well, Roman Stratienko uh, was working on that in support for, for Android. So now you can run um, uh, in Android in Raspberry Pi 4 with the Vulkan driver. And now my, my colleague will continue with the uh, work done in the kernel. Okay, Sam, speaks to Well, continuing with our, our work for uh, on Vulkan on the Raspberry Pi, uh, we need to implement several features that were not available in the hardware. In this case, we need to create uh, what we call uh, CPU jobs. That is part of the behavior that is not available in the hardware support for the GPU. So we implemented that in the in the Vulkan driver in the user space, uh, but. That implied that, that was affecting mainly to some queries uh, about perfor performance counters, uh, uh, timestamp queries, and the compute shaded in, in their dispatch. So this caused issues because when we were uh, submitting the different command buffers to the C GPU, we need to start the driver. Uh, of the GPU submissions, do the work in the user space, and then continue after having the result. So one of the improvements that we have just recently landed in up upstream in the kernel was these kernel CPU jobs. So we move this operation that are, are already known to the kernel space. So when we are creating in the MESA driver the submission, we just say the kernel is going to handle that. So we don't stop on the, the, the submission of, of GPU jobs. That it was a, a, a quite interesting improvement in terms of performance, because before this, there were a lot of stalls, the submission. Another uh, feature that was uh, quite interesting for the users at the end was to know if they were using really the GPU when they're running the different applications. It would happen for a lot of developers that say, I don't know if this is really working with the GPU. So we implemented uh, GPU stats. We suppose uh, these uh, users stats per process using the standard uh, way doing in, in DRM. And we also suppose a global, global stats. So this way some application just, if you, if you want to know the global status of the GPU, just check that the value of the percentage of usage. Because in other cases you need to go to every, pro, uh, every process, check each process which amount of GPU has been using and do the, sum, uh, the complete sum up. So, because of using the standard interfaces, we can run applications like GPU Top. That is very nice because it works for several drivers. And at the end, for the global stats, as we there is no no a common uh, defined interface to expose that, we are currently using a CFS. So the hardware lacks some 
some features to provide uh, the stats as, as other drivers are using in the case for some in, in Intel. So we are we go to a simple approach that is just we put in the in the DRM schedule when we submit a job to the GPU we just get the time stub and we the job ends we get the, the finish time as we are only processing one job on each queue we have the information about how much the, CP, the GPU was used. So we can show here for example well it's on the top right of the, the there is a graph with a widget that the users can check if the GPU usage and in the task manager we already have the information about the the GPU users for example in this screen the main user of the GPU is Chromium and the second one is the compositor in our case it's Wayfair because it's compositing all the different uh, windows and surface that we already have out there available so well uh, those are the highlights of the modifications from from the kernel and one of the main important changes that we did from uh, Bullside to Bookroom uh, Raspberry Pi OS was the change from the default uh, desktop. Uh, previously in Bullside we were running for the Raspberry Pi 4 devices uh, matter with X server and it was working okay and for the previous generation hardware Raspberry Pi 1, 2 and 3 we were running the previous desktop we had, that is, it was a uh, open bus with X server. Matter was too heavy for the this generation of hardware. And when we have this release of Bookworld, now all the Raspberry Pi's that install the the public emails, they get a, a Wayland desktop using Wayfair. That was good. And for Raspberry Pi 5 is the uh, it was just released that is the default one. For previous generation, we still maintain the, the open box and X server, but I want to comment on this. Now, this is the last part of the, of the talk. So, well, Wayfair is using OpenGL for doing the, the composition. It's based on WL roots uh, backend. We use the OpenGL, but it's quite tight for OpenGL. So, all the plugins are implemented there using the OpenGL API. Uh, one of the most important things we did in this transition from Bullside to Bookworld was that the user experience uh, don't change a lot. So, as we can see, this, the Simon Long from the Raspberry Pi has a lot, a, lot, a lot of effort here. So, it's difficult if you don't see the change of the background to figure out what are the difference between the previous version and the new one. The, that is Bullside, and this is uh, Bookworth running. So all has been rewritten, the, the, the panel and the, the theme, for, because there are different compositors. And well, now we go to the desktop on the previous generations of har hardware. Well, we are still using the X server with open box. This is the file, the file we have. This has been the same way since Bullside within transition to matter. And um, the main main cause of still using this is that we need to use sober composition. Uh, we use the, the CPU to render the desktop. Because uh, the hardware limitations are supposed to, to have a, a memory limit that is uh, 256 uh, megabytes by default. Um, the problem is that we don't have control when the uh, GPU memory that is using the CMA, continuous memory allocator, runs out. So at the moment we launch a new Chromium browser, uh, tab that uses uh, CMA memory. If we run out of the memory, next application that can do the, the following allocation could be the X server and it can crash, or the compositor. So the solution, it has been there during all the time is, on these devices, all we are, be, are using is CPU uh, software composition. So Glamour has been off all the time, and there is, there is no hardware support. You can run a full screen application. All, all has been, you can enable it, but it's not the default. You can enable Glamour and you get hardware acceleration. But you, you are exposed to 
crashing your desktop at any moment. And there are a lot of hungry applications, like the browser, that can kill you if you open eight, six tabs, you are you completely frozen the, the desktop. So during the previous uh, the development cycle on good side, we needed to, we wanted to make the possibility of enabling the hardware accelerated applications. So if you want to launch your DLXDRs, that DLXDRs is not using LLVM pipe and is using well, the, the, the driver uh, for the hardware. So we managed to do that. Uh, we enabled the hardware acceleration on the uh, for applications while we were still doing software composition for the rest of the of the desktop. So in case you run out of memory, what is going to crash is just application. You are not exposed to the X server crashing or matter crashing or whatever application because they are not prepared for uh, when you do a, a memory location, it fails. It, we assume that every, every, all of the time it has been working. This was imp implemented modifying the, the model setting drive in the index server. We implemented the support for DRI3 in this case, but without the need of using Glamour. By the, uh, how it is currently written is just Glamour enables the DRI3. So on Raspberry devices, we can use DRI3 even we don't have uh, doing the uh, OpenGL, doing the composition of the general browser. This is, there is some request for text server, but there is now too much interest in integrating that. But we understand because uh, X server development is stuck at the end. But we have been using that uh, downstream for almost a year. And it was a huge improvement for, for the users. And with these changes, we avoid the, the problem of the GPU memory exhaustion. So, well, uh, when we were about to release Bookworld, uh, the idea is, well, we are transitioning to Wayfire as uh, desktop compositor. What can we do for the older generation devices? Well, we need to rethink again how the sol we solved the previous problems with the X server, now with, this, with Wayfire. So we need to uh, do the software rendering composition using the CPU, and we would like to allow again a uh, hardware accelerated application. Well, the problem for using Wayfire for, to do the software composition is that Wayfire is quite tight to use OpenGL. It's using WA rules backend, and it's using several in parts of the code, mainly in the, in the plugins, doing the different effects. We are doing uh, open, calls to OpenGL API, and we, are, we don't want to do that. So, the first thing is WA Roots already has a Pixman backend that is working. So you can just transition and the parts of WA Roots that are using Wayfire just do a small changes to use the Pixman backend and it works. The next part is we needed to re-implement all the parts that were tied to OpenGL in the different plugins that we are, we are we're going to use in the distribution. There are some that are quite complex that we didn't need it, so we didn't implement the change. To use the Pixman rendering logic. So this way we are we managed to get all the rendering do, done by Wayfire to be uh, done uh, using CPU rendering. And well, the problem is that if you do that and you start doing blending operations, they, in our architecture, they become really slow. Because reading from the event buffer when they're doing the blending, uh, assuming that we have synchronous memory, that the, uh, all the changes are flashed at the moment, uh, is terrible. But, so we experimented with enabling uh, for our, the buffers we, ha we use for doing the, the dump buffers to use non-coherent memory. That makes that if you write on the CPU and then you put it on the display, maybe there is not, uh, not coherency. So you, you start needing to flash in some places uh, you need to to handle handle that. So, some people, some things happen funny because in 32 bits ARM is different to 64 bits. So things that work in one place, in the other, in, in 32 bits you, you can just I going to flash the memory before put it on the displays and it works. In 62 bits it doesn't work. At the end the flash is not doing 
in, our, in our architecture are doing nothing. So we need to handle the synchronization, but in the, in the compositor to do that work. But well, uh, the difference is of that change is that everything runs fast enough. But well, the problem is that if when you, when you enable uh, non-covariant buffers, you only want to do that for the compositor, but not the rest of, of the application. So that's complex because some applications don't want covariant buffers. And we were dealing with that, maybe enabling it, it with a parameter, creating a new I, IOCTL for the getting non-covariant buffers, or what? So well, and for the other part, it, that was quite fast, as we already know, the, the part about getting hardware accelerated application, because we already have the knowledge of doing this on the server, so at the end, we need to handle in WL routes to pass the, in the PISMAN backend, to pass modifiers uh, with the DMA buffers, and it was already working. No? So I'm going to show this is the current work in progress we have with this, this work. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 running the, the desktop. Uh, it's using the non coherent buffers. In other cases, we'll see how the parents were moving. The performance is quite good. Some of the more complex thing that the most, most expensive is the shadow calculation. The, you cannot imagine doing this in the CPU. Every time you scale a window, uh, is complex. We are seeing that this, this the LXR is using the, the hardware acceleration, and we are, it's not the best thing that we can do, because there are possibilities of having another different plane to show that there is no display, but we are uh, bleeding this to the, uh, by the compositor. And well, we have enough time, I think. So we are going to see several plugins working. So as a conclusion, uh, we are on the point of maybe thinking about putting uh, this for the, the users, but it's still, it's still not ready. There is work always in the, one of the things that uh, Raspberry Pi devices has is try to maintain all the generation of hardware because you can run the last Raspberry Pi OS uh, with the Raspberry Pi 1 and it will work. We have already tested it, it with the Raspberry Pi 1 that has slower memory. Um, Juan was doing that test and was good enough. No, it's comparable with the one the, the results we, ha we are having with the with the X server. And well, we are seeing Chrome running that is using hardware acceleration. And well, the good thing is that as we are not spending memory of the CPU on the, we can run mul more applications. But you can crash Chrome in just open. I think it's eight tabs. You you will will crash Chrome, in, but only probably in some cases only one window. This is the Zoom working. This is all software composition. Eh? And, and I think that's all from, from us. You can see. We, we already implemented. This is the switcher that has Wi-Fi by, def by default, re-implemented with Pisman. And we tried to do a more simpler option, but this one was already working fine at the end. So we maintain it. the most complex part is uh, doing the transparency and using the alpha channels in software. So, question, I think we are on time. Uh, what Vulkan features uh, do need the CPU to actually get in and do the job? And are they used a lot? Do the applications need them? Will that impact the performance? Well, the uh, our colleague, uh, Mayra Canal, has a blog post explaining this, and they are really, oh, the question is, uh, which features in particular are needed to be done in the CPU and cannot be done in the GPU? I think I, com I already commented. There are some things related to performance counters, mainly if you want, when you are running the CPU commands, to reset the, the counters. This needs to be done in the GPU. No, you need to write in a register in particular. Uh, the other one is related to getting the timestamp because there is no support to getting the timestamp from the from the GPU. And the other one is indirect uh, compute shader dispatch. Is that when you are sending several instances of a compute shader, in this case you need to send in the current, in, in the in the CPU one by one because there is no support in GPU. So you just submit the buffer to the kernel, and the kernel is going to handle that. 
not in the other case you were in the user space you send one wait and you're going to send one by one so well time's up so thank you very much for your attendance